Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbong. Before we get to the meat of the show, I want to give a shout out to you, our listeners, who keep us going every day. You know, real talk, since the pandemic, reading has become a real important part of my daily routine. And getting the chance to do this podcast and bring you new books, interesting authors, and interviews about books I never would have given a second glance has been an absolute joy. And it's only possible because of listeners like you who contribute to the show, which helps keep books and reading alive. If you want to join, please make a donation. You can head to donate.npr.org slash books. The Book of the Day podcast is a team effort. Me, Isabella, Megan, and the rest of the crew, and you. It's the end of the year, you know, the giving season, and your donation this season really means a lot to us. And it helps us get the word out about these books to listeners who aren't in a place to donate. So if you can, know it goes a long, long way. Again, the link is at donate.npr.org slash books. Really, truly, thank you. Okay, on to today's show. Today's book joins a growing category of books trying to explain and talk about the hard world of caretaking. There's now a certain generation of people who, you know, if they aren't taking care of kids, are taking care of parents. But while those books I'm thinking of are generally nonfiction, today's book is a book of poetry. It's by Kevin Powell titled Grocery Shopping with My Mother, and it's about Powell and his complicated relationship with his own elderly mother who is ill. There's love there to be sure, but he talked with NPR Scott Simon about how there had always been a sort of lack of emotion sharing, which makes it tough, right? How do you show love to someone who's never said I love you to you? Kevin Powell's latest poems are written during what he calls, in an introductory note, some of the most difficult and introspective moments of my entire life. I am simply happy to be alive, truly alive again. His new collection, Grocery Shopping with My Mother, and Kevin Powell, one of America's most acclaimed poets and hip-hop voices, joins us now from Brooklyn. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me, Mr. Simon. I really, really, really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. What were you going through, living through, as you wrote these poems? My mother getting sick, first and foremost. Um, I'm an only child, and I had to do what a lot of us in America end up doing. The parent becomes the child, the child becomes the parent, the caretaker. And it was a lot emotionally to process because also my relationship with my mother is very complicated because... It was just her and I all these years. And so I went through all of that. I went through a sad divorce. My first marriage ended when COVID hit. One of my close, close friends committed suicide, sadly. And so it was a lot of stuff personally. And so it forced me for the first time in 14 years to start writing some things down because I, I love the essay as a form. But I said, you know, the economy of poetry is where I want to get to because there's so much I want to express. Let me get you to read part two of your title poem, Grocery Shopping with My Mother. Dear God, my mother does not know that I often walk behind her on purpose as she grabs a pound of hamburger, a bag of sugar, a loaf of bread, a box of cereal. Aisle after aisle, my heart spills a bucket of suds. Aisle after aisle, my eyes spill two buckets of suds. Like that day she slid as a baseball runner would onto the floor in her senior citizen apartment from her favorite chair. And it took my entire back strength to boost my mother's plump frame to get up from her recliner. And before I could, there we were, one, two, three, four, five seconds. Her on the floor, me on the floor, when she and I stared at each other, as we may have stared at each other when I was a scared baby and her a scared young woman. And in that very moment, I wanted to tell my mother what she meant to me, but could not because my mother and I have never hugged, have never kissed, have never said, I love you. And here I was, the caretaker of a person who did not care to be touched by anyone. So your mother never touched you? No. I didn't even know how to hug anyone until I got to college and someone tried to hug me my freshman year in college. And I recoiled because I had never experienced any kind of uh, emotional affection. And, you know, I think what happens with a lot of us, as you know, um, A lot of us, whether you came, your ancestors came from Europe or from Asia or your families came from the South, like my mother came from the South, you just kind of did what you had to do to survive. And what was not involved in the equation a lot of times was just emotional love, you know, showing how you felt about folks. And so 
that's what really made the situation deep for me with my mom. It's like, I have to take care of her, but I also still am that little boy inside of me who wanted to be hugged. Plus I owe it to them because I would not be who I am as a writer. If it wasn't for my mother, she took me to the library when I was eight years old. She introduced me to storytelling, even though she has a grade school education. It was my mother who made me fall in love with words. It was her. It wasn't just that your mother didn't hug you. She, um, let me put it this way. She wasn't kind to you. There was, um, <laughs> I'll put it to you like this. When I was a kid growing up, um, I remember there was a movie with Faye Dunaway called Mommy Dearest. And I remember saying to myself, I relate to this. I love my mother unconditionally. I have great compassion for her. And I don't know what it's like, Mr. Simon, to be a woman in this world that has to deal with sexism, to be a poor person that has to deal with classism, and then to be a, a, a black person that had to deal with racism. She had to deal with all those different isms and try to raise a child by herself. It was very difficult, you know what I mean? And so I had to take a step back and, you know, years of therapy, honestly, years of counseling, and learn how to forgive. Because I think the big thing is, you know, here I am, someone who cares about the world. You know, I, I, I don't want to see a world where there's any kind of hatred, any kind of violence, any of that stuff at this point in my life. But if I can't forgive my mother, then I feel like I'm a hypocrite. But she... You can say it. All right, well, she beat it. you. She did. Part of the reason why I'm a writer, part of the reason why I did write this book, Grocery Shopping with My Mother, is because I believe that it's, it's a form of healing. Like, we have to be honest about this stuff. And so my job as an artist, as a writer, as a poet is to paint a picture and say, here's the different way we can go. Because the easy thing would be for me to just throw my mother away and just disrespect her. I still believe that this book is a love poem to my mother. Yeah. I don't want to leave your father totally out of this. Although, it sounds like he left himself out of your life. <laughs> yes, he did. But your first line is, I forgive you. You know, when I was a child, I, my father wasn't there. My mother and father never married. Um, I saw him a couple times, and then he was gone. And it left a huge what I call a father hole. And what I've realized throughout my writings through the years, I've talked about, since I was a very young writer, you know, absence, abandonment, the, the craving for, for love and emotional connections. You know, I write these poems because I think about family a lot, ultimately. You know, what does family look like? What does it mean, blood relatives? You know, and I think about our country right now and all the hurt that's out there and, and, and the disconnects and how, you know, literally you can have someone, think about just the last couple of years, You've had people shoot up a black church in uh, South Carolina, a Jewish synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a queer club in Colorado. The, the, you know, this, and you start to, I start looking at the backstories of these people who are these shooters, usually males, and you see that there's some disconnect from any kind of love, any kind of family, any kind of sense of community. And the reason why I write the way I do and, and deal with very painful subject matters is because I don't want to spend the rest of my life hurting other people. Let me ask you to read from that poem, if you could. Okay. I forgive you for the hurt forever lurking there like a pipe bomb in my living room, for the hurt forever sleeping there like an unwanted partner in my bedroom. I forgive you because I heard how years later, on your death march, with a body part or two chopped off, missing, you asked your other children for me, the only one not there, the only one up north, the only one who had barely ever seen you, the only one who did not know you, the only one who never called you, dad or pop or sir. I forgive you for dying without my knowing, yet I cried a decade later when I found out because the hole was still there. I forgive you because I also forgive me for all those many years I hated myself for having no father. Um, I've never read that aloud. This is, I mean, this poem, this book is new. I've not read yeah. that aloud, so that was really hard. Um, well, thank you for reading it. You know, uh, what is my poetry book ultimately about? Um, no matter what kind of parent you are, no matter what your gender identity is, just show up for your kids emotionally. Because if you don't, they end up carrying this stuff into their adult lives. And even though they may be adults, there's still that little child inside of them that's hurting. Kevin Powell, a great poet. Oh. His new collection, Grocery Shopping with My Mother. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.